Hey folks, get ready for something downright shocking, because for once, I'm talking about a computer that isn't the TI-99. Though, we are still in the neighborhood, since what I'm talking about today is the closest thing the TI-99 ever got to a sequel. That being the TI Compact Computer 40. The TI computer you can take with you anywhere you go. So whether you're sitting on the beach, or visiting the cottage, or camping in the bush, none of that needs to distract you from your TI computing. For me, the appeal of the CC40 is pretty easy to sum up. It has all the features of the extended basic 99ers like me know and love on the TI-99, but in this case, all those features are packed into a slick, portable device with a 200-hour battery life. Plus, the TI Basic on the CC40 even adds a few things, like being able to reserve memory for machine language routines, then poke them into memory and execute them directly, right from within Basic. In most ways, though, CC40 Basic is just the TI Basic you've seen on the TI-99, updated to work for a computer with a one-line screen and a beeper, instead of a TV and a PSG. This is not, incidentally, the TI Basic some folks might be familiar with from TI's later graphing calculators, like the TI-83 and the TI-84. Their Basic is completely unrelated, it was a fresh start, and it's differentiated from TI's early basics by, I kid you not, being branded TI-BASIC instead of TI-SPACE-BASIC. So the CC40, for its part, is still offering the classic TI-BASIC experience, running a BASIC directly descended and mostly compatible with the BASICs that debuted on TI's mini-computers in the 70s. And in the hardware department, that BASIC is running on a TI-7000 series microcontroller. Not a direct relative of the TMS-9900 in the TI-99, and TI's mini-computers too, but still a first-party TI chip of the era. Anyway, before I talk about what's inside the machine, let's start by looking at what's inside the box when you buy your brand new CC40. Mine's naturally been open already. But all the pack-ins are still here, so I'll go through them. You can see we've got a reference card for CC40 Basic here, which is going to be something to keep with you just about all the time while you're learning the machine and getting a handle on how it makes TI Basic work in just one line. We've got a TI customer survey to mail in, so TI can know for sure what sort of plans we have for our new TI computer going forward into 1984 and, well, maybe even beyond. Then we've got some read this first new user basic info, including a description of the main components of the machine and a few addenda addressing all the little ways the CC40 user guide is either wrong or leaving something out. And finally, we've got the Texas Instruments Compact Computer 40 User Guide itself, which, despite the warnings about errors or emissions, is a really good reference book on the machine, and mainly the core documentation on CC40 Basic, with every command listed in alphabetic order and everything you need to know about it. But with that all unpacked, it's on to the machine itself. Rather handsome fellow that he is, dressed in the classic metallic gray of the 994A, though with one feature more reminiscent of the 994, which is the keyboard overlay, which is going to try to fall off while I explore the bottom here with the intact battery door happily still sticking around where it's supposed to be. Those two components, the battery door and the overlay, are the ones you're most likely to have to worry about losing with the CC40. 
since fully removable battery doors are just pretty easy to leave behind in general, and an overlay that falls off any time the machine's not sitting face up is likewise inclined to end up face down God knows where. Though, happily, I've got both here. But one last part of the CC40 that can end up wandering off is the feet you see there. What with their being as skinny as they are, and 40-year-old glue being what it is. Though, these ones are still hanging on, so I should probably get around to repositioning and re-gluing them, if I want them to stick around for good. As to the rest of the external features, you can see that we've got a cartridge slot. Because it wouldn't be a TI computer without solid-state software, would it? And we've got a scary orange warning telling me to ground myself before going anywhere near there, lest I zap the poor thing to death. Probably just worth getting rid of that sticker, especially given I haven't paid any attention to that advice in any case. But, for some reason, I've let that sticker cling to its pointless existence. Anyway, moving on to the left side, I've got a contrast dial for adjusting the contrast on the LCD display, which is exactly what it sounds like. Though not very necessary in my experience, since it seems to me Max is where I always want it. Then on top of the machine, we've got a place to plug in the optional DC adapter, which is 6 volt negative, and it's a plain old barrel connector. So easy to find an adapter if you need one. Plus, next to that, the hex bus connector, which was going to be TI's new peripheral interface going forward from 83, if they stayed in the computer market just a little longer. Finally, one more feature of the underside of the unit here is the kickstand. You can pull that out to get a little bit of elevation. Not a whole lot, but a little bit can actually help. Firstly, because it gives you a better angle for typing, and secondly, because the LCD has a pretty limited optimal viewing angle, which the kickstand can help you get just right. So, that's the machine itself. Pretty well built, and looks good too with those classic TI aesthetics. But, I think we need to talk about that hex bus port I briefly mentioned there, since that's how we're meant to connect our peripherals after all. Which raises the question, what peripherals? As to that, the CC40 box has some ideas, but the message is a bit conflicted. Since the most important question most folks are going to go in with is going to be, I think, what can I use to save my programs? And the wafer tape digital tape drive blurb is promising fast and reliable mass storage. So that seems to be the answer. But a sticker slapped on there says, Wafer Tape Digital Tape Drive is not available. And the sticker does not lie, I'm sorry to say. Since the story goes, the wafer tape drive was essentially the stringy floppy tape tech sold by Exitron in this era, especially for TRS-80. And in principle, it wasn't a bad idea necessarily. But TI engineers ended up stymied by unfixable bugs in the CC40 implementation, and they had to pull it. So, the upshot is, if you got a CC40 back in the day, and you were looking to move programs off the machine, well, you're gonna have to figure something else out. And the only legacy solution that could do it, and which was promised on the back of the box there, was the RS-232 interface, which was, sadly, rare even then. We do have some other options nowadays, but I won't be getting into the latest in CC40 tech today, since, at any rate, those marvels of modern technology don't change anything for the folks who bought one in 83 and 84, who surely found themselves asking, why the heck doesn't it just have a cassette port, for God's sake? Well, on that count, TI did recognize the error of their ways and included one on the CC40 Plus successor model. But since that one never made it to mass production, only the proud owners of a few CC40 Plus prototypes have the luxury of that option. 
So, if you had a CC40 in its own time, you were usually going to be writing programs on the CC40 itself, making type-in programs the de facto format of the platform. Though one factor that makes this a little less painful is the CC40's battery life is super long, with DI listing a 200-hour battery life on a single set of batteries. So, you at least won't lose your work anytime soon for lack of outside storage. And with the adapter jack there, you can plug in your adapter to replace the batteries and make sure you never lose what you have saved while you swap in a fresh set. But enough about the hardware details. Time to look at what it's like to use the thing to type in some TI Basic and run some code. Though I'll admit I've opened up kind of a can of worms there by talking about what it's like to type in that basic, because this is a barely sub-notebook sized computer, with a tiny keyboard with kind of mushy keys, and it does take a little getting used to, let's just say. Though in its defense, TI did what they could to make things easier, by including shortcuts for all the common basic commands and keywords. And they even include a run button, which I find rather neat, as it really hammers home the system's purpose as a basic machine for running basic programs. When TI debuted the TI-99, they had dreams of being able to sell cheap to produce and easy to develop basic software recouping their hardware costs on the software end. Heck, even some of their cartridges, like personal record keeping, are basic programs, just loaded via cart, and with a few support routines sometimes for things basic can't do well enough on its own. Anyway, evidently TI figured the CC40 wafer tape drive would be their chance to sell cheap basic software for a profit on the CC40 in turn. So, they announced a lineup of that wafer tape software in early 83. But, since the drive never shipped, neither did the tapes. So we're left making our own software for the most part, with only a few key cartridges making up TI's contribution to the library. But as for the basic you'll be programming yourself, well, if you're familiar with the TI-99, the CC40 should feel like familiar territory because the TI basic conventions it uses have just about everything in common with the ones you'll have seen on the TI-99 4A. Display at will let you write characters to a screen location. Call care will let you set a character pattern. Call key will let you grab a key input. And so on. If you're already a TI basic hotshot, then reading the reference card that comes with the machine should be enough to get you off the ground. But on the other hand, if you're not all that experienced with TI Basic, one book that might interest you is Learn Basic, A Guide to Programming the Texas Instruments Compact Computer 40. As far as basic guides go, it aims for a good middle ground between assuming you don't know anything about microcomputers and assuming you're already fluent. Though for me, as much as anything else, I just appreciate it for providing more corroboration of the idea that I haven't just dreamed up the CC40, and it did in fact briefly exist in 1983. If you're a basic guru though, you can probably skip right to the user guide for the details on how the CC40 makes basic work on a tiny machine with a tiny screen. And the details do matter, since the CC40 display is nothing at all like the displays most microcomputers use. It's a 31-character, one-line monochrome display, where each character consists of a 5x7 contiguous block, plus a separate 5x1 row underneath that. So pattern graphics are a little weird. You have got seven custom characters, and you can assign those any patterns you like. But seven custom characters only go so far, even with just 31 places to put them. So, you've got to use each of those effectively and conservatively, and depend on the built-in character set for everything else. 
But speaking as someone who's spent a lot of intellectual energy making TI Basic do exciting graphical things on the TI-99, I'm not about to let a limited pattern set stop me. So I went ahead and wrote a little something to show off the sort of simple custom character graphics you can do on the CC40. Coming from a TI Basic background is kind of an advantage here since, as any 99er knows, TI Basic is slow as can be for certain things. So in some areas, the CC40 does actually manage to outpace it, microcontroller CPU notwithstanding. And so, to show off what the CC40 can do, I cooked up a program that mostly hinges on string manipulation. And I've got to say, in the end, I'm pretty happy with the result. The CC40 can do a few TI basic tricks that go well beyond printing out a line of words or numbers, that's for sure. Still, I kind of wanted to benchmark the comparison between TI-99 BASIC and CC-40 BASIC and do it a little more directly. So, I also wrote up a simple purpose-built performance test. A program that segments a string to grab each of the digits from 0 to 9 in turn, writing each one to screen, and doing that for all 31 screen locations. So, 310 string segmentations and display at commands in all. And comparing our two contenders, we do get the CC40 winning out here, pretty much leaving TI-99 BASIC in the dust. But in the end, that's only natural. With TI-99 strings all being stored in VDP memory, where the CC40 CPU has direct access to all of its RAM and BASIC data consequently. When it comes to pure arithmetic, TI-99 BASIC does win out. TI-99 BASIC can add, subtract, multiply, and divide really well, for what that's worth. But on the CC40, the string is king, and it deals with those even better. Before I leave you today, I'll give you just one more CC40 TI BASIC demo to consider, which is putting all the custom characters the CC40 gives you to work. This one's a short and sweet 10-liner I designed, which didn't take too long to cook up or type in, but I think the result is pretty pleasing, and shows that the CC40 display really can update fast enough to do some respectable animation, even in a program like this that's been optimized mainly for size rather than performance. You can find source in the description, incidentally, if you want it. Optimizing for size is definitely a concern on the CC40 for any big program, since on the most common model of CC40, you've only got 6K of RAM, so half what the TI-99 gives you for BASIC. Though, that having said, I love a good BASIC coding challenge, so I kind of just see that sort of limitation as encouragement. And if I weren't absolutely neck deep in the work on my latest TI Basic cassette game project right now, and busy as can be with that, I'd seriously consider taking up the cause of designing the ultimate CC40 Basic game instead. But <laughs> seriously, I need to get back to work on Hell's Heart, and tear myself away from the 31 character monochrome screen for a bit, as much fun as it is. Anyway, hope you've enjoyed this quick look at the CC40. It's a simple but entertaining mobile micro that has a lot to offer TI Basic fans in particular. You know, like yours truly here. And I'm sure I'll be looking at it again before long, since there's a lot more to talk about. Not just in TI Basic terms, but as far as expansion goes, since I barely scratched the surface there and there are some modern expansion options worth our attention. See you next time, folks. Until then, let's all try to keep it real in 31 characters or less.